2023. White Marlin season in Morocco. In this summer, same crew, same spot. We came back. Yeah. Been waiting for this. It's three months a year. Uh, pretty damn exciting. Full on. It's a rush. We are here to break the world record. We're trying to catch a white marlin on the thinnest tackle you can possibly think. I have always the same targets. Six pounds. White marlin and blue marlin. 12 pounds. The record of Mr. Leo Klosterman. 12 pounds will be played. And I hope it's it that can that be. That's my big goal. When it comes to record fishing, there's a lot more involved, a lot more skill. We're not going after numbers or anything like that. It's only the one fish that's going to count. Ah, six pound, you can't force nothing. Um, flush your teeth with it, it's going to break. You just got to wait for the fish to make a mistake and come on top and hopefully be down to of us because then we'll catch it. The mats don't really add up, but that's the whole chase, you know. That's what we're looking for, and that's everyone's dream. If we can catch that, you know, we move on to the next one. That's what it's all about. To realize a world record, you need a lot of things to be happened in the same time. If one of these things is not working, you will not make the world record. First of all, is the fish must swallow. Secondly, the fish must stay close to the boat. Thirdly, we must grab the leader and not break the leader. Fourthly, you need to gaff the fish and to not lose the fish or the gaff. Fifth, is to have the, the big fish. So, if you don't have all this, you will not achieve the world record. If you just miss one of these five things, you will not achieve it. It's a challenge. Marlon is my life. I will be lost without Marlon. You need, first of all, you need a good boat. Then, a very good captain and a very, very good crew. Of course you can go your whole life without catching a record. That's why records are set. The people before have been lucky at the time, they catch the big one, and now to try to beat that, it's not easy. It keeps the tension and adrenaline high. But the excitement's always there. There's always excitement, so that's what keeps you driving and wants you to stay there. The world record is made to be beaten, you know. Yeah, bring it on. Same team as last year. Daniel, Steve, Salah, and of course, Stuart Simpson. No, same team and same team next year and same team next next year, you yeah, know. We know each other. Everyone knows what you have to do on the boat. Everyone knows. And also, more than to be my crew, they're my friends. With the team, you know, it's like a family. You're like, a, we are family on the boat. The good thing about us, we're a very good team. It's a wicked team, it's a family. It's a family on a fishing boat. It makes life a lot easier for one another. Um, everyone's got their little job. Before it was Salah or Steve, who, there was the, the wireman, and the Daniel was on the gaff. But this year, we have changed. When it comes to the big fish, and this could be the one, I am most of the time the leaderman then. I'm the tallest out of us, so I've got the extra reach that might be needed. 
When you fish under the rule of the IGFA, you give all the chances to the fish. And sometimes 10 centimeter or 20 centimeter are very, very important. No season's the same as the past. This year we had extremely high water temperature. This year the, the weather, the wind, the currents were weird. It was not like all those years that I have fished. 25 degrees, which is about 77 Fahrenheit. When we're actually looking at around 74 Fahrenheit, 23 degrees. So we had a major lack of bait. So this year was a lot of hunting for the fish. The fish came but they were not holding in any particular area. This season's been a bit slow on the big fish, so it makes it a little bit more difficult, more trying. Yeah, it's, it's definitely frustrating. Um, I mean, we're trying everything, the prep work, everything that goes behind the scenes. We're, we're doing everything we can so that that one that we do see one day is, is going to be the one that we can catch. Preparation is everything, it's like any sport. If you're not prepared, it's not going to happen. Uh, preparation is key. Um, you've got to be prepared. There's a lot of break-offs, a lot of gear failure. I check the line, make sure there's no kinks or abrasions on it of any sort. Um, and if there is, just change it. When you fish for world records, light tackle, you must set the drag very well. Yeah, we set the drags every morning. With the experience. With the years of fishing, uh, it's, we are more, more organised. As long as we know that we're all ready to go every day, um, it's the best shot we're going to have at getting that one. White man. Amazing fish, unpredictable. They're just so pretty. You do get mesmerized, those greens and those metallic blues. And it's just, it is, it's the prettiest fish in the sea in my opinion. They're quick, they're fast. Oh yeah, yeah they're crazy. They're crazy. You cannot, you, you cannot anticipate what they're going to do. Mouth wide open, you think, yes, this is the time. And then he'll fade off again. And then when you think he's bored, he's not going to eat. He's just about to wind in the bait, boom, he nails you. Oh, oh. <laughs> Very crazy fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're just whipping around this way, that way. They try to eat the bait, they don't eat the bait. Another one comes up and does the same thing. He's, he's a predator, you know, so it's his instinct. It's a beautiful fish. Sometimes when the fish comes in, it almost looks like a paper airplane with no wind. They just glide in perfectly. And in other times, they're just whipping in and out. It's, it's, too fast for your eyes, you just see blue lights. It's just like electricity under the boat. The behavior, also the behavior, the speed, and the jump. When I see the marlin jumping, it's like uh, you see the angry mermaid. It's beautiful but scary. How dangerous are white marlin on the leader? Ask Blair. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, they've got a long pointy thing on the front of them. And it could definitely inflict some pain. I'm sure it would go right through you if that hit you. You've got a lot of pose, man. It's good fun. You can just have bulls and <laughs> not to be afraid. That's it. <laughs> Again, 
still lucky, no one's been hurt. There's always high fives around, knowing we escaped another one. Ah, uh, Miss Diggs, uh, it's six pound line. Everything can go wrong. <laughs> the fish jumped on the line. The line broke. Many things. Four, 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 four. You cannot imagine. No, it's, it's unfortunate sometimes. Early in the morning and late in the evening, as you get a lot of glare in the water, we cannot see the size of the fish. All you see is dorsal or a bit of swirling. Um, very difficult. So it's, it's what happens. It's fishing. It's heartbreaking because we do try so hard for it. Everyone can do mistake, you know. With mistake, we learn with mistake, you know. We all make mistakes. So world record fishing is all about luck. All those stars are aligned. He's extremely focused and takes everyone personally. That's his dream. He's, he's trying to get it so badly and he's so passionate about it. He definitely shows it. He doesn't hide anything. Oh, you know, all the year I'm waiting for this moment. And every year I have between four and five chances every year. So five shots. And yeah, when I miss one, oof, it makes me sad. But after half an hour, I'm okay. I always thank the crew because the crew is making his best. We just have to stick at it. It will happen one of these days. We will come right and that's what it's all about. That's world record fishing. A fish came up on the long teaser. I couldn't really tell its size, and as I got the boat into the turn, the sun was on my side. It looked like a bigger one than usual from what we had been seeing. So as Ibrahim hooked it, the crew didn't even get to see a jump, and I called, oh, let's have a look at this one. The time they got the gas and turned around, the fish was really next to the boat, and they whacked it right there. It was pretty cool to watch, um, but their skill's still there. They were fast, it worked out well, nobody got hurt. And, I was afraid for them. From the time we pitched the bait, it biting it and it coming at us and we gaffed it was 33 seconds or something like that. Now yeah, when I pitch and the fish feel the hook then he jump, 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 coming to us. Honestly, I, I went back and Daniel and Steve, they, they gaffed the fish in, in even without taking the leader. Uh, this is, was a nice shot, but uh, yeah, the fish was not big enough but we give it as a donation. I was quite surprised to find out that uh, Ibrahim won top angler. Uh, I did email Peter Chabonowski about it and he said, yeah, you guys just outfished everyone else in the Atlantic. We got last year um, most releases in the world of white marlin. Um, so obviously that gives you a bit of a push for the next season. No, I think this year also we, we can get it. I don't know what the other boats in the world did. I think we are around 100 fish released more or less. As an individual angler fishing every day for two months on six pound, probably one of the coolest achievements we've had. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm proud.
Yeah, Leo, he's the original owner of the boat. Um, he's got a lot of history. Um, he's a nice old joker, actually. Um, great listening to all his stories, um, how they used to do it back in the days when he was fishing in the Azores, breaking their records. We have put all that experience that we had for uh, record fishing, we put in that boat. And uh, that, that makes it special. He has a big, big experience. He has many, many world records, and I learned a lot with him. I wanted to to sell that boat to somebody that would do something with it. And I found that they did it. So Capri is present from the Capri is one of those boats, I'll tell you what. I love it. If you get that in the hands of a captain like Stevie, it's you, you can't believe what you can do with that boat. Nah, we didn't get it this year, but uh, it's no drama. We are uh, keep trying and you just never know when it's going to show up. Theoretically, we could go our whole lives without catching a record. Um, it will never change our minds or change our aim for it. We'll still always do it. That's fishing, you know. If we're not going to catch him this year, we're going to catch him next season. Inshallah. Of course, I'll come back every year, God willing. Um, it's my passion, it's my job. And I'm lucky to have a job that I'm passionate about. I'll be here every year. If we catch it, we catch it. We don't, we don't. But it's not going to stop us from trying. The record is made to be broken. And it will be broken. And I hope it's uh, even I. Chasing world records is also a lesson to never give up. I want to catch the world record for the team first for the boss, make everyone happy. And for, for Moroccan people, and for, for our king, Mohammed VI, Linus Rock, Hash al-Malik. The most important is to go on the sea, to be with my friends, and to try. And that's why we never have to give up.